Hello, good evening, and welcome to the midweek edition of News 36. We are live from our news up here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. My name is Aisha Yakub. I am Alfred Okanse. Coming up tonight. Remember, we're live on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, all across the world, on 3news.com, also on DSTV channel 279. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil. Pika And our first story tonight at a crash shopping mall operator threatened to shut down tomorrow, Thursday, October 24, over what they describe as unreasonably high rent and poor services. Also, NDC. Also, NDC flag bearer and former president John Dramani Mahama waits into PDS deal termination. And in business tonight, Ghana Chamber of Mines demands local content law review. In sports, dark clouds hang over GFA presidential elections slated for Friday, October 25, as they seek officials to serve with injunction. And on the international front, first black leader of South Africa's largest opposition party resigns amid row over race. Remember, we're live on DST Channel 279. To our very first story, operators of shops in the Accra Mall have threatened to shut down on Thursday, October 24, in protest over what they describe as unreasonably high rent and poor services. The action the shop owners in the country's premier mall contend is to drive home their demand for rebates or an ongoing repair work is impacting negatively on sales. Rent at the mall costs between 430 and 455 cities per square meter. The shop owners allege that effort to get the managers of the mall, Broad Ghana, to renegotiate their rent had fallen on deaf ears. Parts of the ceiling of the uh, mall collapsed in October last year, causing injury to three shop owners. Now, this has triggered safety concerns, resulting in a shrink in the number of shoppers visiting the mall due to its structural integrity. We are crossing over to the Accra Mall where my colleague Joseph Armstrong joins us with live updates. We are at Accra Mall now where they are planning to actually, uh, please I'm live. Here I'm here at Accra Mall where they are, uh, the tenants here have decided to embark on strike tomorrow from the morning to somewhere in the afternoon. Uh, their reason is simple. They are saying that management here is poor. The washroom system here is poor. They are charged so much money, uh, <clears throat> and this is making uh, it difficult for them to actually make their money. And one also, one other thing they've also complained about is about, you know, if you remember somewhere last year, there was a major problem here where part of the ceiling uh, actually <clears throat> caved in. After a year, management is now trying to actually fix the problem. And then the tenants, the tenants here complain that the ones the way and manner that they are trying to fix this problem, they want it in their, way, uh, their own way so that they can see how customers coming in the system. But unfortunately, management is refusing to listen to uh, them as tenants. And also, this is how they've decided to uh, go about facing the broken or the caving ceiling. And these ten the tenants here are saying that it's really making them lose a lot. It's because anytime people, or the hard call it, anytime um, their customers come here to buy and they see these kind of scaffolds around, it makes it very difficult or it scares them away. And for this reason, most of them 
are refusing to come here, and these tenants are saying that it's costing them to lose so much money, yet the management here continue to charge exorbitant fares, which they are saying that it's no good for them, and then they are calling for management to do something about it. For this reason, until management listen to them, they are going to go on tomorrow, close down all shops here in Accra Mall until further notice. So if you can see on the background, the place has been scaffold, trying to fill the ceilings, and the people here, the tenants, are complaining that these... Oh, we apologize for uh, that hitch there, obviously because of technology, but it clearly gives you an idea of what's happening there at the Accra Mall. We'll definitely bring you a lot more detail on this in our subsequent bulletins there and the situation at the Accra Mall, and also keep an eye on what's happening uh, there tomorrow. But discussions on government's indebtedness to the electricity company of Ghana have begun following the abrogation of the PDS deal. Former Deputy Energy Minister in the Eswa Kofo administration, Katie Amon, is saying government must pay its debt to promote efficiency in the country's power distribution. The U.S. government gave Ghana an October 31 deadline to address issues with electricity distribution company Power Distribution Services, PDS. But even before the deadline, government has announced the termination of a concession agreement with PDS following its failure to prove its financial capacity to manage ECG. The U.S. government, after expressing regret over government's decision, has indicated that Ghana will lose out on the $190 million Millennium Challenge Corporation MCC compact. For once, the political divide were unanimous. America is giving Ghana quite a lot of goodies, and if they are not happy giving us the 190 million, we are going to go to bed crying. Indeed, I make the point that during George Bush's first compact, we had the whole of the N1 for free. We had other ventures, agriculture, and all those for free at no cost. So, what is the reason why the decision was taken that with respect to compact two, we're going to have to, as it were, mortgage the destiny of this country? It's important that we terminated it. That has been our position, and I'm happy that we've vindicated. We are vindicated that this deal has eventually been terminated. I am very, very worried what happens to subsequent compacts. Now that they cannot trust us, would the Americans be willing to invest further? Don't forget compact is coming. And we're even talking of the regional compact, which will enable Ghana export power. Because it stands, we have a lot of power. In the wake of all this, ECG has taken over, but not without caution. Parliament ought to be briefed immediately, because Parliament that approved all these agreements. The people's representative ought to be involved. Others have suggested an IPO. In the states in which you find ECG today, you cannot do an IPO. If you look at your current assets as against their uh, current liabilities, there's a negative of more than $2 billion. And so let's restructure ECG. Let's get institutional representation on the board. AGI is a major stakeholder. They must be represented on the ECG board. ECG is back now. We I'm happy about books, that. Their books aren't yes. too good. Yes. Uh, what is the way forward? How well, the way forward, them? number one, I think government should, as a matter of agency, pay them the monies that they were going to pay, PD, PDC, or what is the name again? PDS. 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 Whatever I call PDS. them, yes. PDS. I'm not sure I remember their name. But whatever it is that government was originally going to pay them, there was an arrangement put in place, which for me wasn't, wasn't quite neat. You have no idea how much money government owes ECG. One of the reasons why ECG wasn't performing properly was because of that. Look, all the state institutions, you name the MDCs, whatever, is government's responsibility to pay for that. They do not pay. And ECG carries that on its back. So ECG is not able to pay all its power producers. That has been pretty killing. Very interesting point that Kitama made. But let's still stay on this a bit further. And international relations expert, Dr. Vladimir Chidanson, joins me on the telephone some on this. Doctor, I thank you for your time this evening. Professor uh, Chidanson, what, what, what would be going forward, maybe the possible implications? of this abrogation on the Ghana-U.S. relations going forward? Uh, personally, I've heard a lot of people um, panicking and saying that going forward there is a possibility of strained relationship. I doubt that because when a nation has taken a certain stance policy-wise and the other nation does not understand, it's dialogue that follows. 
it doesn't break. Look at what is happening between China and the U.S. after each one has built out um, sanctions on each other. And they are still so uh, between North Korea and uh, the U.S. So this, 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 this is not where we should think that we're going to die because we are angered the U.S. It doesn't die that way. I believe we will be dialoguing still. And uh, my prayer is that government will not shrink its own policy space. And I believe that they must stand by their own um, policy that they've taken and, and continue to dialogue with the U.S. over whatever it is. Already we've lost out on the second tranche of the Compact 2. That's $119 million. Now it appears that Compact 3 uh, also may be in jeopardy. Uh, that's the regional compact that involves about $500 million, we understand. How worse could it get, I mean, if we're seeing all of these possibilities? Well, there's the possibility that they would not give us. There's the possibility that they would not even enter into the Compact 3. And at times, even when they want to have a reason for doing that, they can point their own reason. They've been doing that in international trade. They've been doing that in anything. And so that does not mean that we should kill ourselves and think that because compatriot is coming, uh, we need to not take decisions or we should take decisions that please, that please the other, other side. No, I'm not for that. Honestly speaking, in this, where these issues are concerned, what the resilience is what is needed, you know, you have one you go in for, and then at the same time, you, you check your background and find out what are the alternatives for you if the compact doesn't come. And I believe we can even do without that. So let's come and be, be strict because when you look at the agreement and what we have, the things that some of us have known, I strongly suspect that the only way out was to terminate the agreement and make sure that both sides do the correct thing. I think the Americans also know that they have done the wrong thing somewhere, somehow. I see. Well, so, I want to thank you so much for your time this evening. Extremely grateful, Professor Vladimir Infidanso, an international relations expert. Now, still on PDS, flag bearer of the opposition National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, has accused the presidency of needless interference in the ECG con concessionaire agreement, which has led to the country losing millions of dollars. According to him, current happenings between the Millennium Challenge Corporation and government could have been avoided, but for the selfish interest of key people in government. The concession agreement with Power Distribution Services was terminated in a formal announcement by Deputy Energy Minister at a media briefing. The company, which was engaged in March, has since its suspension July 30 been embroiled in a corporate governance tussle among its shareholders. A Ghanaian local consortium holds the 51% of the shares, while the remaining 49% shares are for two foreign companies, Manila Electric Company Limited, Miralco, a Filipino company with 30% shares, Energia and Golan Company with 19%. The NDC at a media briefing on the matter accused government of clandestine attempts to loot the assets of ECG through a restructuring of the shareholder agreement, an allegation which has been flatly denied by government. Former President John Mahama said he is disappointed in the Akufado led government for its handling of the matter. The deliberate acts perpetuated with the crude support of the Flagstaff House in the ECG concessionaire agreement. That has led us to where we are today. This was absolutely needless and could have been avoided. I have just noted a decision by the NCC to withdraw $190 million of the funding amount. It's a sad day for us. This money was meant to improve the efficiency of our electricity utility uh, corporation. Let me emphasize that these shady happenings were absolutely avoidable if the right decisions were taken with the future development of Ghana in mind and not parochial decisions that reflect the sad and worsening situation of state capture that we are increasingly experiencing under the Akufuado administration. To say with the former president just a little further, he's saying that he's coming back to give Ghanaians hope and also ensure that he rescues the, the Ghanaians from the economic mess created by the NPP government. He gave the assurance at the launch of the party's 21-member manifesto committee here in Accra. 
The 21-member committee, according to the party, is to begin work in earnest towards the 2020 elections. The manifesto has been described as a bottom-up approach and will incorporate the views of key stakeholders and opinion leaders, including the Ghana Medical Association, the AGI, and other interested groups in drafting and implementing policies. Members include Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu, Gusitano, former Education Minister Professor Jane Nanopoku, Ajimine, and other party bigwigs. Party National Chairman Samuel Fosu Ampofu said the party is determined to win the 2020 elections. 2020 is possible. And with the kind of unity, togetherness, party cohesion that we are experiencing now, nothing and absolutely nothing will stop us from winning the 2020 elections and bring the smiles back onto the faces of our people. I want to end by sounding a warning. We don't want to be distracted with our focus on 2020. And anybody who goes on social media or anywhere and talk about 2024 cannot be part of this party. Former president and flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, says he's confident of victory in the 2020 elections. This must be a manifesto that ignites hope in Ghanaians. It must be a manifesto that incorporates the concerns of Ghanaians. And it must be a manifesto that restores the confidence of our people in the leadership. Together, we win 2020. Let's now go to Parliament, where the House was thrown into a frenzy as MPs debated best, uh, ways in tackling breast cancer. Female MPs issued a stern warning to their male colleagues to be extra careful when sucking their breasts after Deputy Majority Leader Sarah Joasafo had made a statement on breast cancer awareness. Mr. Speaker, and because one of the causes is a discharge, it's a discharge from the breast. My advice to the man who loves sucking breast is that if you're shocking the breast of a woman who is not breastfeeding and there is a discharge, it means that you've got to advise the woman to go, go to the hospital. It is encouraged that if you are palpating yourself, if you are palpating yourself and you see a discharge, you are not lactating, that is, you are not breastfeeding. But once upon a time, you see a discharge. It may not necessarily be in that it's breast cancer. We only encourage you to see Dr. Minisha. But the issue of sorting, the issue of sorting, the issue of sorting, it has, it is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. The issue of sorting the breast, Mr. Speaker, again, is good. The sucking action stimulates the production of a particular hormone that allows breast milk to flow. So even for a woman who is lactating or who has delivered, if sucking doesn't happen, you can have breast encroachment. So it is very important to report, especially if the color is not the usual color, either dark, red, or any other color. And when the breast is sucked violently, you can have a discharge, which may not necessarily be in the form. Thank you, Jessica. Men can also, and there's evidence that men also develop breast cancer. So it's not only a disease for women, it's a disease for both sexes. Mr. Speaker, whoever brought the topic here, I commend him and I wish him a long life. He should research and bring cervical cancer issues for us to discuss, prostate cancer issues for us to discuss. Early enough, Mr. Speaker, you, 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 you turn 50, you turn 60 as a man and you begin getting worried. We have just launched a program that is introducing one of the very critical medications that is used for breast cancer, Herceptin. We have put it on the health insurance medicines list and we have partnered the producer, said that we are buying it far, far cheaper than what is how much it is sold in Europe and elsewhere. So now, very soon, um, women with breast cancer 
can easily access on the health insurance medicines list if you have a health insurance card and you have attracted breast cancer, you can have access to that medication. Very interesting how this will be like. But I'll just remind you, as we hear the general also wading into this whole awareness of breast cancer on Saturday, uh, the West Hills Mall should make a date to be with us. But on an MTN video report today, Clarence Ejiri reports on an abandoned classroom block at Swam Dadieso in the Western North region. That is a senior high school. We have the seven unit classroom block which started under the ex Muhammad's administration. Unfortunately, after the elections, this building has been abandoned. In fact, this building was needed urgently to support the inadequate classroom space. It was almost 70 to 80 percent complete. We have the roofing almost completed. However, when the elections were over and the NDC lost, this is the fate. Of the building. The most painful part is beneath the roof. You can see cement. These are cements that are needed to complement and to support the work and finish it. Is that how we intend to spend our taxpayers' money? Is that how our leaders will use our taxpayers' money? This is the Senior High School. Current surgery reporting from Swam and Dadiaso. Thank you. Clarence there from Swaman Dadiaso in the Western North region. You can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. You're watching News 360. Business News up next with Nanipia Mensah. Brown Papi, stay with us. This is News 360. It's time for business. My name is Nanikia Mensa Brampa. We begin from the mining sector where the Ghana Chamber of Mines is calling for a review of the local content legislation in that particular sector. At the Chamber of Mines local content workshop held in Accra, the Chamber contended suppliers were finding ways around the local content legislation to import mining inputs rather than manufacturing them locally. Paul Selum Agbo. The local content legislation was to harness the opportunities within the mining industry to create and expand the supply value chain for mining inputs dominated by Ghanaian indigents and manufacturing companies in Ghana. The local content was sought to move expenditure of mining companies from importation of inputs into a thriving local manufacturing ecosystem has rather created a retail economy and shrinking local manufacturing for mining inputs. Local supplies under the local content requirement were importing materials to sell to mining companies rather than sourcing materials locally. There are manufacturing companies in country that are manufacturing and supplying to the mining companies. There are also Ghanaians who are not manufacturing, but they import from somewhere and then also sell to the mining companies. The two put together constitute local procurement. One that is, the true local procurement is the one that is supplied by the local manufacturer. It is strictly uh, a local manufacturer that has set up in Ghana and it is manufacturing that particular product. Very often, that is where we have low figures uh, coming out from the mining company. Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Mines, Suleiman Ukoni, advocated the development of universal standard for local suppliers under the local content legislation. It may be there, but you can't take advantage of it. Mining firms are multinational firms, and they need to meet minimum standards. The quality has to be good, um, the pricing has to be good, um, it has to be competitive relative to, for example, imported alternatives. And then over and above that, you should, uh, any prospective supply should ensure that it's able to supply on a constant basis, regularly as required. And of course, not forgetting health and safety and environment, environmental requirements. Because The minerals and mining sector contributed some $2.3 billion in fiscal receipts last year. Now, Casapreco Company has launched a promotion to reward customers as part of celebrating 20 years of its flagship brand, Alomo Bitters. The promo, which ends in December, has prizes worth 2 million cities at stake. Casapreco Company was established 
out of a goal to provide quality drinks at affordable prices. Its flagship brand, Alomo Bitters, is an extraction from local plants using sophisticated machines to blend and package to the taste of consumers. It is a scientifically proven herbal alcoholic drink of international standard sold in many countries across the globe. Since May this year, consumers have won prizes including television sets, smartphones, live goats, and lots of free drinks. The leading and successful alcoholic and non alcoholic beverage producers in Ghana has on its product line mineral water, wine, cider, and liquor. Well, let's talk about government's uh, one district, one factory. And in the Volta region, it has only two out of the 57 one district, one factory initiatives commissioned by government. Addressing the 2019 Volta Trade Fair launch in Accra, Deputy Trade Minister Carlos Inslahenkra said four other proposals are at the last stages for financial commitment. The two factories are located in the Ho and Hoi Hoi districts. In the meanwhile, the Volta region has more to offer than just this two out of 57. And so I think that in the minds of those who decided to bring about this program, wherever they brought it from, I say, God bless you. Because if we are able to portray the Volta region as, a, as an investment destination, people coming into the country will identify with you and also bring investments to your backyards. The whole factory processes cassava, while the one in Hohoi is into wood processing. According to Carlos Ayankra, the one district one factory secretariat received the total of eight proposals earmarked for the Volta region. Three of those proposals were declined financial backing by the banks. Four were approved and are in the last stages of the bank guarantee. The last of the eight proposals, the minister said, is a self-financing entity which has since been working progressively. Voter Regional Minister Dr. Ashbo Lecha urged the business community to take advantage of the open doors of the region. Together, we will turn around the economy without donor budget support and aid. This will enable us to achieve the vision of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana, that is to build a prosperous Ghana beyond aid. He assured them of government commitment to ensure equal opportunity for all. Now two Chinese traders have been arrested at Po in the greater Accra region for tax evasion. They were found out to have falsified invoices and suppressed sales in order to pay less taxes. The two traders, Gu Wanzhou and Yu Jing Wang, were tracked down after a tip-off. The Special Revenue Mobilization Tax Force followed up to Pond, where the two operate a fruit juice factory, Dada Foods. They were massaging figures on the original Vatin Waste booklets to read something else other than the amount that had been indicated on the, on the original, where you have two uh, vans loaded with their products. But the values on the original Vatin Waste booklets differ from the duplicate copies. What it means is that at the end of the day, I don't know, when they are counting for the tax, they will dwell on, on only the duplicate copies which have lower values. Acting Commissioner General of the Authority, Amisha Daewusu Amwan, noted the authority is owed some 5 billion cities in unpaid taxes. Our full year target is 45 billion, and as at the end of September, we are 32 billion. And therefore, these measures that we are taking will ensure that we will collect whatever we need to collect and we are confident that we will meet the um, target so far with the actions that we have in place. The GRE revealed it will clamp down on such tax evaders as part of its efforts to meet this year's domestic revenue target of 45 billion cities, of which 
32 billion has been collected as at the end of September. Well, you can visit 3news.com for more business updates. But that's it for business with me, Nani Kia Mensah We have sports after this is News 360. In entertainment tonight, Ghana's most beautiful returnee from the Ahaf region, Efia, says she's back in the competition to snatch the coveted crown from the other poised contestants. <laughs> The ladies, the bonding was there, the chemistry was there, as <laughs> most people would say. It was so fun getting to meet all of them. It was nice getting to also talk about your region, talk about your principles, your values. So the platform, the stage, everything about GMB was excellent for me, and I missed it. <laughs> That's how I call it, because it's a time for me to build myself. It's a time for me to add more values to who I am already. So I'm coming to have fun. I'm coming to portray um, the unique nature, or culture, traditions of my people. And God willing, if the chance comes for me to win, of course I'm going to grab it. Collectively, we knew it was a brown half already. Yeah. Now we have divisions. Yes. You've not won the competition before. Mm -hmm. Hema came very close yeah. last year. And it will be exciting to have a winner from the region. So it will be a bit of a game plan. If his game plan is just a simple one. Have fun whilst bringing out the best you can. If the normal Ifia was boring, I'm coming to be fun. Sure. If the normal Ifia was the cool type, then she's coming to be a bit hot. I'm going to pay attention to the little, little details that I wasn't perhaps paying attention to. Wow. So that is that is what I'm bringing on board now. Yeah, <laughs> I know your region have very huge expectations yeah. of you. So look straight into camera and tell them something. So just expect the best from me. I'm not going to disappoint you. Watch out for me. Thank you. All the best. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you for staying with us over the last 60 minutes. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.